Well, this is long overdue. I've watched some movies a couple of weeks ago. I should have been done reviews way sooner, but for whatever reasons, I haven't gotten around to it. But I've been trying to put together some different things, so I'm going to have an intro for this video, and it might be kind of long. It's like 30 seconds, and I know probably the best intros people say are like 5 or 10 seconds long, so I'll probably try to work on changing that in the future. But I really wanted to have like a metal intro because I really like music i really like metal and i wanted to incorporate that with it and you know how can you really get a glimpse of a metal tune for only five or ten seconds so uh, i'd like to add some more visuals to the intro too i wanted to have it kind of busy i'd like to maybe i don't know have some some games or some different things in the background uh, some stuff that i have uh, that i can kind of uh, I want to turn down like the transparency of it, like keep the intro as it is, and but have different stuff going on in the background. I don't know. It's just an idea, and so I'm trying different things. I have came up with a new movie review screen, and I've got something else that I'm going to put on there after a while. But uh, before I had the One True Misfit Patreon thing, and now I just want to have that edited down at the bottom of the screen, so it's a lot clearer to see, and it, and it kind of adds different dimensions to the videos, so... Uh, so after I record this video, instead of just straight uploading it, which was easy, but now I'm going to edit it, and which will take more time, but I think that it'll be kind of cooler in the end, and uh, I need to come up with some kind of an end screen too or something, but anyway, um, I want to talk about the movie The Producers. I have this DVD. I don't know if the movie is originally in black and white, but I have this color version. And it's a Mel Brooks movie, and so I talked about watching Blazing Saddles not that long ago, and I really love that. I, I love all those movies that I've seen, and Airplane's, you know, what I consider the best comedy of all time. And I love Spaceballs. A lot of people, that's their favorite. So a lot of people talk about Airplane, they talk about Spaceballs, they talk about Blazing Saddles, but I never hear people talking about the producers. And so that's what kind of made me wary of watching it. I've had it for a while. And, um, you know, I've read, I've read, I've seen it like in lists and stuff, but, you know, I didn't know what to think about it. I know it's, it's older and, and people haven't talked about it as much, but I want to tell you, uh, on the back of here, it says one of the funniest movies ever made, Roger Ebert, and it's definitely up there. And this movie needs to be talked about. And so that's why I want to do this review. You should definitely watch this if you're a fan of his other work. Uh, I don't think that this is a parody movie like the other ones, and that's what you know a lot of people like about Airplane and Spaceballs and, and Blazing Saddles. They're parodying other types of movies. I don't know if this is necessarily like that. This seems more of like an original story. Um, but I love this, and um, this makes me want to see the rest of Mel Brooks's movies. There's lots of other ones that I haven't seen. Surprise, surprise. You know, I haven't seen uh, Young Frankenstein, and I know that's another hugely popular one. And uh, there's some other ones, I guess there's one like High Anxiety, it's supposed to be a parody movie of like um, Hitchcock movies, um, and I think he did Robin Hood Mid and Tights, which I've seen a long time ago, I really like that one, but uh, I'm just a huge fan of Mel Brooks now, I mean obviously I already knew that he was good, but this, uh, after watching the producers, even more so and uh, I couldn't recommend this movie enough. It actually had me in tears at one point and uh, you know laughing not sad but I was laughing so much I was cracking up and my eyes started watering. I'm like this is ridiculous. This made me appreciate Gene Wilder a lot more too. You know mostly everybody probably knows him from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's how I know him. And then there's the other movie he did with Richard Pryor. I, I don't remember what it's called like Hear No Evil, See No Evil, something like that where one of them plays a deaf person, and the other plays a blind person. I think Richard Pryor's blind, and, and Gene Wilder's deaf. And that's funny, too, but uh, this might be one of my favorite Gene Wilder movies. I don't know. I mean, the, the other ones are so good, too. I mean, it's hard to really say. But 
the other guy he's with in this movie, uh, let's see, I don't know what his name is, Zero Mostel, he's really funny too, and a lot of people said they like this pairing with Zero and Gene over Richard Pryor and Gene, no, I don't know, but I probably do like this movie better than Hear No Evil, See No Evil, it's been a while since I've seen that, that movie is kind of like, you know, from what I remember, that movie's pretty good, but, you know, this movie's, like, great, and this movie, I think, is, you know, I don't remember uh, cracking up so bad at Hear No Evil, See No Evil that I uh, was in tears, you know, but this movie I was, and this movie's ridiculous. So I want to read the back of it first, kind of just to give a synopsis of it, and a starring, stunning, out outrageous, and breathtaking debut from the Los Angeles Times, that's what they said, from acclaimed writer-director Mel Brooks, who did Young Frankenstein and Spaceballs. The Oscar-winning comedy combines pure pell-mell lunacy and wild ad-lib energy into an uproariously funny film. And uh, this movie, I think, was made in 1968, is what it says down here. It's an hour and 30 minutes long, it says on the back of here. It says, low-rent Broadway producer Max Billystock who, who is Zero Mostel, this guy who's with uh, Gene Wilder in here, and his high-strung accountant, Leo Bloom, who is Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder is the accountant of this Broadway producer, Max. Discover, they discover that with the help of a few gullible investors, they can make more money on a flop than on a hit. Armed with the worst show ever written, called Springtime for Hitler, and an equally horrific cast, this double-dealing duo is banking on disaster. But when they're sure to offend, musical becomes a surprise smash hit. They find themselves in the middle of a Broadway blitzkrieg. And so, so yeah, um, at the beginning we are introduced to uh, Max, this Broadway producer, and he's like seducing an old lady, and it's funny. And... I realized not too early on, I was like, what's up with his hair? And it seemed like he has like long hair and he's kind of like bald in the front and he has like his hair like combed completely over to where it looks like he has hair. It's like combed completely from the back to the front. It's ridiculous. I love it. And you know, maybe I'll have to do that someday. Maybe that'll be how I'll do my hair. I don't know. But it's great. Um, so it's just really zany and so we're introduced to Gene after we see, um, this Broadway producer Max uh, seducing the old lady. Well, he's he's uh, kind of they're kind of doing like role playing, like they're um, you know like a play, like they're actors playing different characters, and uh, they you know she enjoys that, and he's doing it to get money from her. So before she leaves, you know it's not really like sexual, but. like that that was unaccounted for and uh, Max is like well you can just make that go away can't you <laughs> can't you just make that go away he's like no I can't do that he's like it's illegal he's like I'm an upright guy and everything I don't want to do this and um, but he starts this uh, Gene Walters character starts thinking and he's like technically if you uh, you could uh, raise a whole bunch of money for a play and then make the play like terrible so nobody wants it or whatever and and you can get away with having all this money uh so basically they, they he comes up with a scheme like you could raise like a million dollars or something and do this screw everybody over come up with a play that they hate that will be canceled and keep the money and it would be legal in a way or something or you know nobody would know about it or whatever uh, it wouldn't be legal, I guess. I don't know. Um, but then he's like, no, that would be, you know, that, he's like, yeah, that would be illegal or whatever. I don't want to do that. And Max, when Max hears about it, you know, he's, he's all about it. He's like, let's do this. Come on. Like, you need to do this. And, uh, 
And there's some scenes there between the two of them at the beginning that are just hilarious because Zine Wilder gets hyster or Gene Wilder gets hysterical. And uh, there's a part where he he has this blankie, this blue blankie that he's kept as a baby or whatever, and he's wiping his face with it. And Max takes it from him, and he's like, "No, not my blankie!" And he freaks out. And uh, that really made me see how funny Gene Wilder can be. I've never really seen him that zany before. How really off the wall he can be. And so there's some zany stuff there between them. And it ends up being Max tries to it basically kind of bribes them into. Uh, helping him with this scheme and he's he taught he he takes him downtown for hot dogs and he takes him out on the boat and stuff and he's talking all sweet to him and he's like you know you've been living your whole life as an honest man and everything and you're screwed over by you know the man or whatever and so he, he finally talks them into it and gene gene's character is like yes like i'll do it like i've been screwed over and everything and i'm gonna you know get get my money's worth so so they go through with this plan to come up with the the worst play and they uh max finds one called springtime for hitler it's kind of like this pro hitler play where hitler's like a homosexual and stuff like that and so they they go and find the uh guy who wrote the play and he's like a nazi sympathizer 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 whatever and he, he's crazy, he's wacko. They ask him, you know, for the, the rights to do his play into a musical. And uh, they, he agrees. And um, they go and they find a director who's like a homosexual. And there's some funny stuff there. And uh, it's not overly sexual or anything like that. Um, and people could say that a lot of this is offensive. And definitely with the Hitler stuff, yeah. But uh, I could see people being offended by that. That's the whole premise of this uh, show. And, but it's funny though. It's all, you know, all within context because like Gene, they're wearing like the Nazi, Nazi sympathizer or whatever. They're wearing like the uh, swastika to get his approval or whatever. And then after they leave meeting him, Gene Walter's character takes off the swastika thing, throws it in a trash can and spits on it. So it's like they're not really, you know, pleased by it, but this is all part of their scheme to make something terrible that people won't want so they can get away with taking all this money. And they're going to get all this money by, uh, you know, by Max seducing all these old ladies to get money from him, like even more so than he has before. He's just going to go on a spree of seducing old women. So they go to the guy who wrote the play, they get his approval, they go, they find this director, and... Uh, He's like a terrible director basically and then they go to find actors and um they there's a lot of guys that are dressed up as hitler that actually seem like pretty good for the part and they're like no 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 they want to find like the worst one or whatever and so they find this guy who who's like a hippie and like sings and stuff and it's totally like nothing like hitler but they're like that's the guy so they want like the worst of everything for this and uh, then Max goes on the spree, starts seducing women, getting money, and uh, oh, that stuff's funny. It's so absurd, and it gets to the point to where they have the play, and at the first act, people hate it. And uh, but then during like the interlude, uh, people start loving it, like in the middle in or the intermission or whatever. Because that's when the Hitler guy comes out, the hippie guy, and he's playing on the piano, and they start liking it, and they're like, oh, wow. And so this blows uh, Max's minds and his accountant, because they're expecting everyone to hate it, and everyone starts loving it, so they freak out. <laughs> and uh, then they're like, well, how can we stop this play from continuing? So they come up with an idea to like blow up the theater, and um, they end up like blowing themselves up or something they end up getting arrested for it they go to court and so they end up going to jail over it so i skipped over a lot of things but i feel like i'm being long-winded already now i want to show something else that i've kind of came up with that i don't know if i'm going to keep this but i got to kind of work with the system of how you know i'm going to talk about movies review them and such and so here is the thing a uh, movie review talking points so because some of the times the last reviews that i've done i've forgotten certain aspects of the movie um 
because I'm just trying to do things by memory or whatever. But this kind of gives me a guide to uh, talk about more things. Um, the acting, like I said, I love that. I love Gene Wilder. It made me appreciate him even more. The Zero guy is hilarious. The guy who plays the Nazi who um, wrote the play is funny. The director guy is funny. The guy who uh, acts as Hitler is hilarious. So uh, the acting is, is great. They're all very funny. It's a comedy, so they do their part um, convincingly <laughs> as, their act, as their characters. The music, uh, it is a musical, so it has some... Uh, I mean, the, the movie is not a musical, but they're making a musical. And so there is, at least the song I remember is, you know, the Springtime for Hitler song, which is hilarious. And uh, they're basically saying Springtime for Hitler and Winter for all the other countries. And so they're, you know, or Springtime for Germany. So it's basically just pro-Hitler. It's just saying, you know, God bless Hitler and and uh damn everybody else or whatever and so they're dancing to it just like a musical kicking up their feet and stuff you know springtime for hitler and then the crowd's like this is unbelievable you know this is uh very offensive so that's funny though um besides the music besides that i don't really know what to say about cinematography i don't know if that's really the correct term but i'm thinking like uh you know, just the scenes and the set pieces and the way that it's filmed overall generally. I don't really know what else to say about that really. We have different sets. We have Max's office at the beginning for a long time. And then uh, I really like when he takes uh, the accountant out and tries to spoil him and tries to bribe him into going along with the scheme with him. Like when he goes and takes him for the hot dog and then he goes and takes him, um, you know, in the boat. And stuff so those scenes are funny and then we have you know like the theater and at the end we got got them in court and then they go to j prison and uh, there's a scene in a diner I'll talk about later and there is so there's these different sets and stuff and they're they're all good enough you know this isn't really like an artsy movie but it's good though I mean everything looks spot on so I don't really know what else to say about that. The general plot is hilarious. It's absurd. I love it. Um, like I said, this is more of like an original movie than just a parody of things. Um, so the plot is just so absurd with him seducing women to get money and this whole scheme to come up with the worst play that's so offensive that people will hate it and then and then, you know, they try to build, blow up the theater, and so it's just all over the place. It's nuts. The characters are funny. Uh, kind of goes along with the acting, but, you know, they have a variety of characters. Like I said, the, the Hitler guy is like a hippie type, and then there's the Nazi guy who wrote it, and then there's like the homosexual director guy. Um, there's also, after they get all the money... Uh, Max starts spending it and stuff, and one thing I remember is that he's like, I got a new toy, and he's like, oh, a toy? He's like, yeah, you want to see it? And it's this woman who's like kind of like a foreigner. She barely speaks English, but she's really beautiful, and she's wearing like skimpy clothes, and he's like, go to work. And she's like, go to work? Okay. So she like plays this song, and she just starts dancing. Like, that's all she does. Like, that's her work. And he's like, see? And he's like, oh, yeah, a toy. Um... So he's spending his money on just like stupid crap already. Uh, the ending, you know, I love the ending. Uh, they end up in prison, basically, is what happens. But, you know, the way it progresses with the people hating the play and then loving it. And then they try to blow up the theater and then they go to court. And then uh, the court scene, I think... Uh, if I remember right, like, I don't know if it's Gene, uh, his character tries to put over Max as, like, this great guy, like, he inspired me and all this stuff, and, well, I mean, like, the end of the story is that they committed, you know, great crimes anyway, and so, uh, they said, like, you know, 
he talked about how he like charmed old women and stuff and like how would they live without him and everything and like he made their lives better <laughs> but really he was scamming them out of all their money <laughs> and so uh this like this motivational speech like you know you think that maybe they're gonna get off the hook and it's like no they're gonna go to prison um the scenes that I liked and I didn't like, you know, I can't really say much that I didn't like about this movie. But I do want to talk about the scene that made me crack up in tears. And that's after they come up with the idea that they're going to do this. And Max starts uh, flirting with the old women to get money again. There's a scene with, with an old lady in a diner. And they're being kind of flirty and stuff. And uh, there's this guy that's playing. It's like a nice fancy diner. This guy comes up with a violin and he starts like playing a violin like standing right at their table like right in between them like right next to him he's playing this violin <laughs> and uh this max guy is just kind of like staring like he's not happy about it or whatever and he takes like a bottle of champagne or wine or something and he just like holds it like this like tilted towards like right on the guy's leg or like between his legs and he's just like dumping out this bottle the whole time. It's just like pouring out down this guy who's playing the violin. And he continues to play the violin. And so the scene goes on for a while until like the bottle's completely empty. And then he like sets the bottle down. <laughs> and he's like, well. And the violin guy just like stops playing. And then he just like slowly backs away. <laughs> and that's when I was just like, wow, this is just insane. Because uh, the whole thing, he's flirting old women to get their money. This guy's coming up and playing the violin. He dumps a bottle of champagne down his leg the entire thing and he's playing the violin the whole time and then he just stops <laughs> it's just you got to see it for yourself it's just like it's just like too much it's just way over the top like everything that's going on it just blows my mind how you know he came up with that scene that was probably the best scene in the movie to me but there's a lot of great ones um and you know when they find out that everybody loves the play it's pretty good too because the hippie guy like during the intermission they all hate it and stuff and uh, there's this little bar room or whatever above the theater uh, and uh, Jean, Jean's character what is his name anyway I keep saying that Leo so Leo and Max Leo and Max go into this uh, bar room He's like, everybody's hating this play, like, let's go celebrate, so let's go have some drinks or whatever. And so they go to the bar and they're drinking and they're like, yeah, this is great, you know, we're going to be rich and everything. And that's when the Hitler hippie guy comes out and he's playing the piano and he starts making everybody laugh with stuff that he's doing. And they're like, oh, this is hilarious. They're like, yeah, we want to see the rest of it and stuff. And uh, they don't know that this stuff's going on because they're in the bar or whatever, they're celebrating and then people start coming into the bar from there and they're talking like, yeah, I never thought that I would say that I loved a play called Springtime for Hitler, but this is really good. And they're like, wait a second, what did we hear? They're like, are they saying that they liked it? They're like, oh my God, they like it. They're like, we're screwed, what are we going to do? <laughs> and then they go out and they watch like the second part while everybody's just yakking it up and just applauding and they love it. And they're just like horrified, like, oh crap. Uh, that's really funny um, how that scene goes about. Similar movies, I don't know. Uh, some people don't like to compare movies, uh, but I do. <laughs> so I don't know though. Um, it's just a, it's a funny comedy, and uh, I can't really think of anything like it. I guess that they actually made a musical or a play based on this, and then there's another movie that came out later on with Matthew Broderick that is based on that play or musical or something so it's not really like a remake of this but it's like similar i don't know but it's not rated very good and i don't really care to watch it honestly maybe sometime way in the future i'll give it a chance but i know that this is gold and this is all i care about um so that's that said, I guess this is probably long enough of a review but I really suggest this movie more people need to be talking about this if you watch it and you love it tell other people about it because this will make you laugh a lot it should if, if it doesn't make you laugh I don't know if you're offended easily or uh, I don't know uh, it should make everybody laugh there's so many different you know types of comedy in here 
uh, but just with the hysterical-ness of Gene Wilder, the zaniness, and then the absurd, the offensive stuff, and it's great. I love it. So I watched this uh, movie with my mom a couple weeks ago, and she loved it too. So she was laughing the whole time, and so it's great. I think that a lot of people could appreciate this movie. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, like I said, with... Uh, I reviewed, uh, what was it, Walk Hard, when I said there's a lot of overly sexual stuff and stuff like that in it. A lot of stuff that just tries to shock you, like, oh, I can't believe they're showing that on the screen or whatever. Can't believe they're doing this, you know. Or all this perverted stuff, you know, this didn't really have that. Yeah, he was flirting with the old ladies and stuff, but, you know, it's not, it's not like that. And so, it stinks how some movies, you know, rely on that sh shocking stuff uh, for comedy, and this is... You know, this isn't much better. But uh, we also watched Wonder Woman together, which I really loved. And then we watched Rain Over Me, which I really loved also. And so I want to do reviews on those movies. And, and there's lots of others that I need to be doing reviews on. But after I record this, I'm going to have to do some editing and then upload it. And then so that'll be it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any movies you'd like me to review or anything like that so anything else I should check out and uh, thanks for watching and adios